Hello guys, today I'm speaking with Lucas, DevOps engineer who's located in north of Spain. Exactly, he's located in Oviedo, correct? Maybe you can tell us exactly where it is. And he's working remotely for a German company. Hello, Lucas. Hi, Sandra. Nice to have you here. So maybe you can tell us shortly how it came that you are working from Oviedo for a German company. How did you find the job? Well, it was uh, quite a, um, a chance. I, um, I, uh, I, I started uh, as, a, um, uh, as a system engineer. Uh, I had been working remotely for quite a while. And um, in my company, they had been doing this work for um, uh, this, um, well, it's a multinational, uh, DXC, uh, but for the German uh, part of it, uh, it's a, um, uh, a, a, a project that involves uh, cars, so that makes sense that it's <laughs> German branch. And, um, and they wanted people, it, and it's a project that is all, all, glo all remote, which is very cool. It's, we are people from, I'm, uh, me and my boss is from Spain, but there's people from, from uh, Bulgaria, people from Poland, uh, some people obviously from Germany, but everybody's scattered. We, we get together ah. once it, it six months in uh, Beblingen, Beblingen is very close to Stuttgart. So we go there, we meet some uh, car engineers sometimes, we meet people from the company, but we have daily, but we, I, we can talk about this a bit later. Uh, mm -hmm. And the point is, my boss uh, was looking for. Um, he was in the, um, working for the company, and they were looking for more people. So he already, when he hired me, he was looking for for somebody who first uh, was a good system engineer, uh, had uh, automatization, DevOps uh, knowledge, also some knowledge of scientific um, computing because there is a lot mm -hmm. of simulation, and also had good knowledge of. Of English and of languages in general, and that's how he met me. And um, and since the work since the work was remote, there was no problem working from uh, Oviedo or my. Actually, right now I am because of the quarantine. I am in my in my tiny village in my farm, so I'm not even in the city. I'm in a farm. <laughs> so yeah. Nice. And so he was looking for a new member of the team. And how was it possible that you came together? Where did you, where did you see him? Where did you meet the company? Well, it was uh, actually it was um, it's a it's a very nice story. I I went um, it was in one of these meetups. I went once in Madrid for a uh, it's, it was called um, Pi Data Spain, I think, or Pi some numeric Spain or something like that. It was in the Google campus. Amazing. And I went once, yeah. yes, in, in, in uh, like 2015, and I met one of, of the founders of the company, and she wanted to hire me, but I, but I told her that I, I didn't want to move to Madrid. Uh, and, uh, and, but we left in very good terms. And afterwards, she, we get, we get in touch somehow in LinkedIn and all that. And she came to, um, um, to well, it, like you say, I, like, like you know, not, not my city, not Oviedo, but one very close, Gijón, where there is also a university. She came for a talk. Wow. And she gave, and she gave in one Google development group uh, talk, one of these uh, women tech makers, um, talk about um, data and um, um, another related talk. And we started talking and she said, no, I'm, we are looking for a, for a position. And she explained in this position and it was fully remote and there was no problem. I said, okay, good, good, then it's perfect. <laughs> it suits me. <laughs> <laughs> and especially in the DevOps area, maybe you have to correct me. Maybe I know less, I, I for sure know less than you about it, but I think it's, uh, um, yeah, there are so many kinds of saying this is a DevOps job. 
nowadays, you know, exactly, and, exactly. and some people are, are telling it not really correctly. So for me, it's for me, for my truth, it's like a combination of automation and also like pull quests and uh, code reviews, maybe a nice combination of um, also a little bit coding, but more also code reviews. Um, and so I am expecting you always have to work in a team. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's my question. Um, how is it possible to organize something like this remotely? Well, the, the point is, there is somebody always in, in, in the local lab. For instance, we are, we're building one of our big projects is building a, an innovation lab. And there is somebody in the lab, obviously, and that's very important part because yeah. if somebody break, if we break something or if the cabling or <laughs> something like that, that's vital. But all the rest that you said, like coding or fixing or everything, we have, as you said, of, of all the parts that can be coded or automatized, we have to keep synchronized. And that's where both the tools we use mostly uh, Jira, Teams, things like that. People use other things, Trello, whatever. But it doesn't matter so much, it's Slack, like, it doesn't matter so much the tools. But also the methodology, using agile methodology, using, uh, 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 as you said, code reviews, uh, very good documentation. So DevOps is more, as you said, a philosophy. It's not so much, people say, I look for a DevOps, but that's, for me, is, no, you're looking for a system engineer or you're looking, for, which much as well a DevOps, uh, uh, who understands DevOps philosophy. In fact, in fact, in our team, we have people who are great coders, who know a lot of Kubernetes, who know a lot of OpenShift, but they are not so good in, in Linux um, or Linux administration, so to speak, classical Linux administration. My strength is in the other way, in understanding systems, understanding um, the other part, and we complement each other. Also, it's the, the other thing, creating a team yes. and, and, and fitting together. Um, also, managing well the team, um, cre creating well the, the um, creating also a, a culture when you can communicate the things, especially in remote, because it's it's better, but you have to be very aware that many things not everybody under, gets it at the same time because simply they are remote. So if you say a thing in a, in a meeting, maybe they are not in the meeting or maybe they didn't read the chat or maybe they didn't get the email. So. And um, maybe you can give us uh, a little bit more insight into your daily tasks because now I already said what I expect the DevOps is yeah. doing and you already said that I'm kind of correct with this expectation, but maybe you can Tell us a little bit more in depth. What is your typical day uh, and your task? Well, uh, uh, mm, we have a kind of dual uh, approach because mm -hmm. we have to do like implement implement things, mm -hmm. and we also do some technical support for other uh, streams. So, for instance, imagine there is a stream of machine learning or a stream or of, I don't know, Java coding, Maggi, mm -hmm. or Python coding, or whatever, or mm -hmm. Travis, whatever. We have to do some support for these people who use Kubernetes or whatever. Even the ones that don't use our infrastructure, but we are kind of the experts. <laughs> and because we are the experts, <laughs> all those tickets in the end fall to us. Yes. And also, True. so this is a part, it's not a big, it's not a lot of, job, of work, but it's a small part of work. But we also try in this to empower users to not too much to solve, but to teach users to document and to uh, to do uh, learning, uh, transfer learning sessions, to do videos. It's it takes longer, but in the long term, the um, the knowledge lasts more in the group and 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 spreads more in the in the in the in the organization. And then there is the proper work of DevOps, which is. Um, uh, there is a part, we don't do so much architecture, architecture is, well, some people, I mean, me personally, I'm not an architect, but there's people in my group mm -hmm. with architecture, is designing of infrastructures we do, implementation, uh, testing, monitoring, so we can be, I don't know, uh, 
whether in the cloud or in on on premise on physical infrastructure which are as i told you i'm, I'm here in spain and uh, mainly they are in germany or in some cases they are in 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 the united states uh, we have to install remotely manage test monitor and uh, uh, see and of course we cannot <laughs> table or or change a hard drive but we can ask somebody and uh, and also do remote like helping with somebody uh, but yeah yeah it's it's mostly um and and all these jobs the jobs that are mostly repetitive try to uh, be as much with different tools like ansible or uh, mostly we use ansible but there's other people who use others like um, uh, Randek, it, for other projects in my film, we use Randek um, um, to, in order to be, um, to have the things that can be repeatable, traceable, and, um, and uh, so even when you're not there, people can just editing a few files or changing a variable, do the job. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a good point. How is this possible to make this system administration part uh, when we are talking about hardware? <laughs> because you said there's uh, obviously remotely is a little bit <laughs> tricky. Yeah, remotely what you try to do is, I mean, there is a part that interacts with, uh, with the user. But for instance, we get alarms, we get physical alarms. For instance, this morning, uh -huh. we have a hard drive that is failing, but the point is I get an alarm. So mm -hmm. I get in touch with with one of the persons in Germany. We say, "Well, if this hard drive it's starting to fail, or it will fail soon, so we have to order." And we had a call this morning. We say, "Discussing, well, should we order? Do we have budget?" So it, it's a bit more. <laughs> it's not so much technical. It's a bit more managerial, which is fun too because you're also. Um, I mean, you are. Uh, you have to also to, to planify to plan what to do in the next uh, two months. Uh, the, is, what is priority? This, this, whatever. Mm -hmm. So a major part is also managing things. Yeah, I see you as a very like, uh, yeah, uh, networking point or a point in the network where you have to organize uh, like both sides, administrative side and at the at the same time the developing side, isn't it like that? I mean, one of the things I think that most uh, people in IT jobs ignore is their uh, human and communication skills. They are extremely important. Mm -hmm. uh, I come from a scientific background. Mm -hmm. In science, they are work because you have to give talks, you have to give... Uh, to publish papers, things like that. But many people from technical skills, I mean, from coders or systems, mm -hmm. they don't do it so much. And, and that's vital, that's vital. Yeah, about how many uh, people are we, are we talking in, in your company in total? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the company I really work for, it's like 10 people. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the project, the, the project is, is a project in DXC, which is, I mean, Around. the technical part, the engineering team is probably like 30, 40 people. Mm -hmm. Sales and everything is probably like 100. Wow. Um, so I understood that you are doing uh, the end product is more like uh, in the automotive area. So maybe you can tell me a little bit more in depth what it is. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, there is this, it's a part, I work for this project called Robotic Drive. DXC has a project which is called Robotic Drive, which essentially what they do is um, um, they provide car companies with technology for uh, automated driving. Mm -hmm. The idea is to reach what is called uh, level five, uh, which is uh, fully complete uh, automated driving. And uh, what DXC is doing um, is um, um, they provide 
to different companies, different things. So some companies only want set of software, some companies want hardware, infrastructure, some companies don't. And, um, and that's what it is. You can... Got it. So, mm. yeah, I, I work most on the... If you look it up, it's called GDDL, Global Data Lake. It's essentially infrastructure, data processing infrastructure. You already said a little bit about your typical day. So what has been one of the most exciting projects in the past? So maybe you can talk, tell us a little bit more about specific features or about other exciting technical parts of your work. Uh, well, in this project, uh, we have done cool things. I mean, for instance, we have um, I mean, cool. We have done very interesting things because we started. All the project was based first on the cloud on Amazon. Then we migrated. My first job was migrating it to Azure. Oh. I have to migrate everything to Azure with uh, very little downtime. Then we started building on premise, <laughs> working on premise uh, with a lot of help. I mean, not only myself, but, but, <laughs> but the point is that we have been learning a lot of how different things work in different environments, and uh, not only the, the infrastructure, but also the the, 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 the software, you know, the, software, the other software components, uh, the. the Parts that analyze that make the, so to speak that make the core uh, analyze the environment, no? and um, and uh, it, so that would be in this in this project. Is it also part of your job to do fixes? More than fixing coding, which I can I can help them fixing coding, is that when they are running uh, their their codes. The code does not run, for instance. Imagine you're running a Java program or a Python program and the program fails, or gives mm -hmm. an exception, or the machine collapses, or the... And then we have to do... Uh, it's similar to what... So we have to understand why. Is it a wrong input? Or is it that the system failed? Is that the hard drive was full? So, I mean, if it's... Uh, if it's that you program something stupid, that I cannot help you, I mean, you did something. But if, if you program something with sense, then we can start to work. That's what, what we do. We do a, um, so we do a lot of pair programming in that sense. We maybe uh, the start debugging. We maybe look, okay, then you found a bug. We, we may open a ticket with the people who did this code or with, uh, or we may look in Stack Overflow or in some place if there is a, yeah, so, but it's, it's not so much pure development, but the interaction of the develop, the, the, the code with the system. Got it. Uh, which is. It sounds like you are also doing a lot of uh, research then for, for the developers in, uh, Stack, o uh, in, in Stack Overflow. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, and, then, and then not only in Stack Overflow. So what we do is kind of a, um, interactive research process. So for instance, uh, what I mentioned about using Kubernetes, we use a lot of Kubernetes in our in our applications, and some of the develop developers are are very proficient in Kubernetes and almost need no help. Some have problems and there is a problem with some technical thing and you can fix it. But with some, you can actually start um, really of trying to get the most of the platform and the most of the, um, try to get them to really understand how, not only Kubernetes itself, but the implementation we use, which is OpenShift, um, Try to get them to understand how it's how it, it is really um, uh, working in our platform, and then try to get in their um, not so much in their code, but in their in their YAML, for instance, or in their in how they use their 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 application or their their orchestration. 
getting the most of the of the application. So yes, yes, we do it. Not not only the part of of fixing bugs, but wow. also trying to 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 make them use more proficiently the platform. Do you have specific sources to recommend for uh, somebody uh, who wants to go more deep into uh, the DevOps area? So like websites or like other um, yeah sources. Uh, maybe even podcasts or YouTube channels or something where we can say, okay, if you are interested to go the way and to learn a little bit more about it. Um, the, the best one is very exhaustive. It's, it's mostly about culture. Is the Linux uh, Foundation uh, uh, DevOps course, you can do it for free in uh, FedEx, uh, or you can pay $100 and you get the certificate and pass it down. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's excellent. It's a, it takes a bit of time, but it's excellent. It has a lot of material, a lot of, and only for the links it's worth the, the, the 100 bucks. But you can get it for free. I mean, that's the amazing thing in material. Uh, what I, my first course and the one, uh, the ones I recommend more, uh, the, the Linux Foundation has a couple. Uh, um, they are available on edX. They are called, uh, they are um, uh, LFS, um, sorry, I have to look it up. One is called uh, Introduction to DevOps. Transforming and improving op operation, and the other is uh, uh, something also around related to DevOps. Uh, this something also in production. We will write it afterwards. You can uh, show me and send me, yeah, and good. we will write it into uh, the links into our show notes to help others. Yeah, the the new one, I got it. The new one is Introduction to DevOps and Site Reliability uh, Engineering. This is the new one and the old one. And the old one was also very good, was very much about culture. And the new one is more about, uh, the old one was more, the new one is more about um, technology. But both are very good. There is a, a novel which is called, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a novel, but it's very good. It's called The Phoenix Project. I heard um, about it. Yeah, it's it's about uh, it's based uh, it's based on a, another book in the seventies, and it's about a company that has to transform itself. They, it's mentioned in this in these courses, and it's it's quite famous. Uh, and it it talks about that about this uh, DevOps philosophy, and um, and it's it's quite interesting. Uh, as well, if you read it mostly, you learn about it, and um, wow. and then if you on the more technical part, I would recommend probably people know about it, but uh, Katakoda. Katakoda is uh, it's a platform where you get um, essentially free virtual uh, environments to do things. So what mm -hmm. they do is. Um, you can get um, what we were mentioning about um, Docker and Kubernetes is the best way to learn about it because they they have like free guided tours to do you to uh, run Docker things or Kubernetes things. I mean, if you don't have a Google free Google account or free Amazon or free Azure account, there you can uh, uh, you can have a, they have a, courses and they have a um, um, paths to learn, so you can say, I want to learn, for instance, Ansible, or I want to learn, uh, yeah, Docker, and they have uh, even sometimes by the official company, very base five minutes Docker, ten minutes Docker, or five minutes Kubernetes. So you get different details. That's it's, nice. Sounds it's a great. great. It's a great. It's a great, great resource. It's a great resource. And, and it's for free? It's for free. It's for free. There is a paying version for companies. I mean, I think you can pay and you get some extra stuff like uh, 
I mean, the thing is, when you are out, uh, everything gets deleted. And if you pay, I think the, the, you, it gets a store or gets something. And for companies, what you get is they can design their own courses. Uh, there is a very good Ansible course online for free, which I don't remember the link, but there is a very good one. Um, yes, I mean, uh, and now it's very popular there even, uh, for instance, for I, I, we use a lot of OpenShift. The people who code OpenShift, they have Twitch. You know Twitch, the, the platform, they have Twitch online and you can talk with them while they are doing, and they do demos. Really? You go online. Yes, it's super cool. So it's, it's amazing, especially now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they started like a couple, of, I think it was before the, the quarantine. And uh, I sometimes, but it, it's like super long because they do like four hour demos. I mean, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, 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 yeah. nice. So that's, okay. another, that's another resource I recommend. The Twitch of, oh yeah, I will paste it. The Twitch of, of OpenShift. It's, it's very good, the guys are very, really? are very. Honestly, wow. Yeah, wow. It, they are very good. And they do, no. they do like, I mean, OpenShift is a paying product, but um, yeah, for instance, they did this one, which is, uh, this is recorded, no? But uh, this is recorded. Uh, uh, but uh, the, this is an example of what they did, and it's it's really amazing. They were explaining how this is called the thing called GitOps. GitOps is uh, essentially what we were talking about. No, you generate the code in Git, and the code gets automatically generates I don't know virtual machines or generates Kubernetes or Docker. No, so we it passes a certain number of tests, it, whatever, no? So everything is very, it's a pipeline, very automatic pipeline. No? So this is, a, for instance, like a, a, a thing they did, uh, and they have, they do it in the, in the, in their Twitch. Uh, I saw it the other day because I, I follow them on Twitch, and I was surprised uh, they, 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 they do it, and I check, and yeah, they, are, they do it every week or every, every few days. And um, so, yeah, now it's very popular with the, with the, um, with the, um, with social networking, it's very very. Popular. Oh, interesting! So there are so many sources and so, so many possibilities for all of you guys, by the way, um, to to start. And don't hesitate also to contact one of us, uh, Lucas or me, if you have some technical questions about it and you want to go deeper the road. Uh, I hope it's okay when I <laughs> say it to the, to the guys. <laughs> And uh, sure, sure. Uh, for my, mainly for guidance, I mean, if people want to know more uh, more material or want to, uh, I'm not an, I have not written any book. I have friends who have written very good books. Jaime Walter, for instance, written an excellent Python for uh, in um, how's the name? It's not a really it's not an editorial. Uh, Pact has written a very good book on Python and Ansible. Uh, I get no money, eh, for, but it's, the book is very good. Uh, but it's because it's of DevOps, so that's why I think of him. Uh, but yeah, they're excellent material. I mean, pay, pay with money. I mean, I, this is where like free material, but pay material you get. There's a lot of books, or really has a lot of books. Uh, uh, Coursera has also some courses on DevOps, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Index, uh, yeah. All this uh, Udacity, all these platforms have now. It's now it's a very very good. But yeah, if you want some hints about material, don't doubt. Yeah, I, I mean, I saw that you are extremely passionate about what you are doing, and uh, I really like the combination of all these sites you showed us today. And yeah. It's time, Lucas, to say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you definitely for, for your time. It was amazing to have a, have a more insight into what is a, a DevOps, what is a DevOps doing. So thank you so much for your time, Lucas, and have a great day. <laughs> Likewise, Sandra, thanks to you. Thanks to everybody for listening. Bye. Bye. <laughs>